Hello, everyone. My name is Alexandra Abramova, and the next edition of the Sports Life program is on the air. Let's start as usual with the most interesting news from the world of mixed martial arts. On the night of April 16 till 17, the debut of the fighter who performed at a 20th MMA series event, Kajia Markajiev, in the UFC took place in Las Vegas. Kajia Markajiev is an experienced athlete who had 11 successful fights and no defeats before the debut match in the UFC. The Russian got the right to perform in the world's leading promotion thanks to his victory over Brazilian Jesse Silva on October 26 last year at the Dana White Challenger Series. Before that, Markajiev defeated Vladimir Vasiliev in the main fight of the evening of the MMA Series 20 by unanimous decision of the judges following the result of three full rounds. Koji was 100% ready for his first fight in the UFC with Brazilian Caio Borrelio, as he himself told on the social networks. However, the outcome of the confrontation caused a wide resonance among MMA fans. Amor Gajiev clearly lost the first two five minutes to his opponent, twice giving up the initiative and then missing several series of blows. The only chance of victory for Gajiev was an accent to a painful reception or a knockout in the third round. Unfortunately, the hunt for the submission did not bring success. The Brazilian also landed a forbidden knee blow a couple of minutes before the end of the final round, and the judges awarded technical victory to Kaya ahead of schedule. Experts note that the violation was absolutely clear, also same as the situation with Aljamain Sterling. Kaji was on the three points before the strike. However, Peter Yan was disqualified in the same situation, while the judges only gave Kaya a penalty point. Former UFC champion Daniel Camir could not stay away and wrote the following on social networks. No knock on Kaya or Martin, but every single time I threw a strike in Octagon, it was intentional. They both should have been disqualified. So win two rounds, throw unintentional illegal strike, and then hope the guy can't continue. A comment was also given by Aljamain Sterling, whose reaction to the fall from Peter Yan MMA fans still remember. I like Borrelia, but how do you get to win there? I'm super confused. It's bad that the ref you have for the night pretty much dictates how a fool is interpreted. No consistency. Should be an NC at best. Koji himself expressed the same idea on his personal page. Recall that in the same situation, Ojamain literally fell on the canvas, languishing in pain. Koji Amar Gajiev, in turn, only swam without showing a reaction from the blow. Sterling responded to this as follows. I hope you'll all give him the same treatment as you all gave me, because apparently those knees don't hurt. Keep the same energy, folks. After the American also added, guess we're all actors. We wish Kajiyama Gajiyev good luck and to pick up his first victory in the UFC as soon as possible. The day before the aforementioned UFC Vegas 51 fight night, an equally significant event took place, the Belator 277 tournament, where Russian light heavyweight Vadim Nimkov had to defend his title as part of the coming fight of the evening. Recall that the Atlas opponent was American Corey Anderson. The fight took place on night of April 16 till 17 in San Jose, USA as part of the Light Heavyweight Grand Prix Final, where the winner had to confirm his champion status and collect $1 million in prize money. The first round in terms of the number of points scored was left to our compatriot, who managed to impose a stand-up job on his opponent. However, in the subsequent second and third rounds, Vadim noticeably lost the initiative to the American, who tried to take the fight mainly in stalls. In the third five minutes, Anderson was already in full control of the fight and began methodically delivering heavy blows to the opponent's head from the full mount position. Shortly before the end of the round, there was a clash of rivals with their heads, as a result of which Nimkov received a serious eyebrow dissection. The confrontation was immediately stopped by doctors and then completely declared invalid. According to the results of the fight, Vadim remained with the title of champion in the light heavyweight category, but none of the opponents took the monetary reward and the belly of the Grand Prix winner. It is worth noting that such an outcome of the fight caused indignation among the guests of the tournament. After the announcement of the results, a buzz of disapproval swept through the stands. The new date of the reconduct of the fight is still unknown. However, taking into account the analysis of Vadim Ninkov's work during the fight, experts recommend that he better prepare for the Americans' takedowns. The most significant and striking event of the past week was the long-awaited anniversary MMA Series 50 Grand Arena event, which was held in Moscow in the Bolshoi Circus on the Vernadsky Avenue. 
Camille Fadjie, president of the Fight Night Global Promotion Company and the first deputy general director of the Admiral Hockey Club Master of Sports and winner of prestigious combat sambo and jiu-jitsu competitions, shared his expert opinion on the organization of the tournament. The 50th anniversary MMA Series tournament was held at the Zapashny Brothers Circus. Actually good, interesting pride. Good organization, yes, maybe there are not enough of big names, but in all other respects, I really like the tournament. Lots of guests in the circus, in fact, there is a great view. Once again, I caught myself thinking as in childhood that everything is visible. Everything is visible very well. A good show was prepared by the organizers together with Edgar Zapashny. Great. As part of the evening of fights, the audience was waiting for fascinating circus performances, four intriguing super bouts, six intense duels from the main card, and five fights from the prelims. Let's start, of course, with the main fight of the evening, where Yakov Ikimov had to defend his title as winner of the silver bout. Recall that the opponent of the Kuzna Club people was the Egyptian Mahmoud Mando in whose style is to finish fights with submissions in first rounds. His opponent, Yakov, on the contrary, is a bright knockouter who is also used to taking victories in the first five minutes. The only exceptions were two fights with Ali Baba Zadeh Farid and Daniel Samaras in the 26th and the 45th tournaments respectively, where the fights reached the last round. In the new confrontation, representatives of the lightest weight immediately tried to show each other their ability to work in a stand-up. Yakov occupied the center of the cage, to which Mando responded with a sweeping attack. Exactly in the first minute and eight seconds of the fight, Yakov delivered a cleared knockout knee to the hat and celebrated his 13th victory. The silver bout of the winner of the MMA series remained with Yakov, and the new fight became the second fastest in Yakov's career after defeating Hasiev Zurov at the 59th second of the fight. Congratulations to Yakov Ikimov on a successful and a beautiful title defense. The coming fight of the evening turned out to be really hot. All MMA fans were worried about one question, whether Sergei Babashev will be able to win his first title and to take the bronze belt tomorrow. Sergei's opponent was an experienced athlete, a well-expressed wrestler to Sumbeka Silgazia from Kyrgyzstan, representing Fight Club No. 1. By the time the fight started, Babushev had 13 successful fights and only two defeats, both perceived in the MMA series. Having lost to Zalimhan Yusupov in May last year, Sergei rolled back to the very beginning of his winning path. The athlete went to the opportunity to fight for the middleweight category bronze belt for almost a whole year. His last opponent was the representative of Kyrgyzstan Tarsimbeka Sulgaziu, who was supposed to check Sergei's fighting arsenal on all fronts. The fight lasted three full rounds, while until the announcement of the results, the audience could not predict the decision of the judges. In 15 minutes, the fighters managed to work both in the rack and the stalls. Thurston Beck kept trying to move the course of the battle to canvas, where he was most comfortable in working. However, it turned out that in Mala Club, Sergei was purposefully prepared for the wrestling, where the athlete was not as strong as in the rack until recently. The work done has brought his results. Sergei was not only able to counterattack the opponent's initiatives, but also surpassed Asil Gazif in the number of strikes. Following the results of the fight, the judges gave the Murum athlete a victory, and Sergei Babashev received the first title in his career, the winner's bronze belt. Another title defense was for one of the most title heavyweights among amateur of Russia, a former fighter of the N1 Global League, Zawahar Jababayev, the pupil of Baku fighters. The representative of Kyrgyzstan, Dostanil Diarbekulu, came out to check the Azerbaijani athlete. Zawahar's next performance on our side ended in his favor, having won the bronze belt of the winner of the MMA series in heavyweights just two months ago in the rematch with Yuri Persenka, Jababayev successfully confirmed his status. In a duel with Ildiar Bek Dastano, Lu Zawur once again took the victory, knockouting his opponent in the first round. Recall that of the four performances of Khachibabayev in the series, each of the fights ended in knockouts. We will look forward to Zawur Khachibabayev's new entry into our octagon. The card of the Super Bows was opened with a duel with the participation of Alexander Padmarov, a people of the Storm Shlemenka fight team. It is in an Atlas habits to exhaust rivals with a long three-round fight. Padmarov's new opponent was the Iranian wrestler Nuri Amin, who in the contrary is used to deciding the outcome of the fight in the first round. This fight of heavyweights became not only one of the most intense fights of the last Jubilee Super Tournament, but also one of the fiercest and bloodiest duels in the history of the MMA series. 
the batter spent three full rounds in the octagon, during which they initiated pass from one athlete to another. Despite the fact that the Iranian's record was the half of the professional result of Kutmarov, Nuri nevertheless had every chance to defeat his opponent. From the very beginning of the fight, Amin urged the opponent to work actively in the rack, immediately inflicting a small series of jabs. Such a rush of the Iranian disoriented Alexander. Having missed an accurate uppercut, Padmarov found himself on the floor, where he was soon overtaken by his opponent, who was now ready to fight in the stalls. Alexander quickly managed to take the initiative and from the position of the full mount to deliver a large number of accented blows to the Iranian's head. Despite the heaviest hits, Amin managed to get out from under the opponent and return to the center of the cage. Therefore, Nuri repeatedly managed to break the distance and to stop Alexander's attempt to turn the course of the duel into the wrestling again. In the second round, the Atlas spent the first two and a half minutes in the rack, exchanging the heaviest blows until Alexander had the opportunity to make a pass into the opponent's legs. Up to the tenth minute of the fight, Padmarov controlled the course of the fight in the full mount position, and Nuri showed miracles of survival, steadfastly holding out until the end of the five-minute fight, despite a serious eyebrow dissection. A similar scenario was repeated in the third round, where Amin controlled the rack again and Padmarov controlled the stalls. At the end of the 15 minutes, the overall statistics looked like this. 126 ground punches by the Iranian, of which 61 were accurate, and 128 and 84 performed by Alexander. By the unanimous decision of the judges, Padmarov took not only the victory, but also the heavyweight bronze belt of the winner of the MMA series. At the end of the fight, the Iranian side announced a desire for a rematch. The 50th anniversary Grand Arena tournament went exactly as we expected. Not exciting, beautiful and impressive. And I, Alexandra Abramova, was here with you. See you on the air every Thursday.